Dear Prue, I writ to you before this day, by the coach, and send this to tell you that Mr. Clay has been here since that, and I find I must stay in town this whole week to attend my business, or leave some things undone, which it is as bad to do as to neglect the whole. You may be sure, if I find I may be six or seven hours employed where I please, it shall be at Hampton Court. Pray keep yourself warm. Be cheerful, and believe me, dear creature, sincerely thine, Richard Steele. Dear Prue, I should have rid down to Hampton Court this evening, but that I am to be with my mother about a mortgage to be made for paying off the bonds which stand out, that we may be easy on all hands. We must write this night to Mr. Thompson for the title, etc. The Queen come next week to Hampton Court, and stays a fortnight. I am, with my whole heart, your faithful husband, Richard Steele. Dear Prue, I had yours last night, with an enclosed to my mother, which I do not design to deliver. You accuse me of an unkindness, for I cannot imagine what. If you want for anything, it is that you will not supply yourself with it, for I very regularly send you wherewithal. My Lord Chamberlain is expected this night in town, from whom I hope for an order for a very handsome apartment in Whitehall. As soon as I receive it, I will immediately remove into it, where I hope you will be pleased. I am sure it is the utmost of my ambition to make you so. I am your faithful and affectionate husband, Richard Steele. My mother has altered her mind about the mortgage. I think to come down tomorrow night to give you an account of everything. In the meantime, send by your countrymen two guineas. Dear Prue, if you do not hear of me before three tomorrow afternoon, believe that I am too fuddled to take care to observe your orders. But, however, know me to be your most faithful, affectionate husband and servant, Richard Steele. Madam, I heartily beg your pardon for my omission to write yesterday. It was no failure of my tender regard for you, but, having been very much perplexed in my thoughts on the subject of my last, made me determined to suspend speaking of it until I came myself. But, my lovely creature, no, it is not in the power of age, or misfortune, or any other accident which hangs over human life, to take from me the pleasing esteem I have for you, or the memory of the bright figure you appeared in when you gave your hand and heart to, madam, your most grateful husband and obedient servant, Richard Steele. Dear Prue, I am going about your commands, and will send word, or come home to dinner. Yours ever, Richard Steele.